how are you doing? My name is Crystal Ann Compton, and I'm hoping you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I just want to very quickly hop up on the internet and have a conversation with you about what just happened in my life today, just a little while ago. I was on a podcast and a YouTube show, which was so insane, so deeply problematic, so nuts that I am reeling. And I want to tell you the story about how I got on that show, how I almost didn't go on for today's podcast, and then what I learned from today's show. But before I do that, I do want to share with you that I am launching a program called 360 Align and Activate. This is a program that's going to span 30 full days, the month of October 2022. And it is all about opening the channel of communication with your body, like actually talking to your body and receiving messages back, your mind, and your spirit, and then activating your future life purpose and path. Um, there's a lot of interesting things about this program. We've got uh, channeled and composed meditations. I collaborated with a great person in Sweden to, to create these uh, charged meditations to help you have these conversations and help you to elevate and get to the next level in your life. It is so affordable, by the way, really, really affordable. There's a reason for that. I'm not going to talk about it right now. Go to the page, check it out, sign up again, October, 2022 to go to the page. All you have to do is go to crystallandcompton.com slash 360, the numbers crystallandcompton.com slash 360 link in the description. Okay. Now let's get back to this interview. I just did. Okay, first and foremost, I received an email sometime in July, maybe early July, mid-July. It kind of fell through the cracks and I stumbled upon it um, weeks later and it was just an invitation to appear on a podcast. And I've been kind of in a season of yes. Well, I'm in a season of no too. <laughs> but I'm like, I wanna get out and I wanna talk to more people. I feel like in my community, it's kind of all of the same people. It's all of us together. We talk with, with one another. I see you on YouTube. I see you on Instagram. I see, we, we all kind of know each other. And I don't really get out a whole lot onto other people's platforms and just have conversations. So I have been of the mind to do so. And so when I read this email, I also noticed that the host name shared the name of my brother, who I love. This beautiful person, my brother, his name is Jesse Lee. And so is the host. His name is Jesse Lee. You might already know who this is. I had no idea who this was. I had no idea who this was. I just said yes in my season of yes, yes, of course, I'd love to. Let's have a conscious conversation. They wanted to talk about faith, mediumship, and current events. I'm like, okay, I can talk about all that. And so the, the interview is to take place today, which is Thursday, the 25th of August. And around Monday, I started getting that little tap on the shoulder. God bless God. Thank you, God and me, Crystal. Boop, 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 boop. You might want to look into this podcast. You might want to look into this person. You might want to check them out. So I pulled them up on YouTube. The name of the podcast or the YouTube show is called The Fallen State, implying the fallen state of man. His name is Jesse Lee Peterson, and he is a um, rascal. <laughs> He is a very problematic personality. He is a shit stirrer. He is an agitator. And he has countless videos uh, of all kinds of interviews, including with spiritual people. And those interviews are actually really good and he's very respectful, but he does challenge them typically around the subject of Christianity. And he's got other interviews with like celebrities and YouTube stars. And um, many of them have walked off the set, like walked, walked out of the studio right in the middle of the interview. Others have like logged off of Zoom, like, goodbye, you're weird. I can't. What are we doing? People just bounce. A lot of people bounce, but some people stay. The reason they bounce is because of the hyperbolic and frankly, ridiculous assertions that Jesse Lee Peterson makes. Now, I don't want to be pejorative towards him as a human being because I think what he's doing I think for him, there's a purpose to it. He knows he's a shit stirrer. He knows he's a troll online. He knows that he's trying to box people into their ideologies to expose them. But at the same time, I think there's a purpose to chaos and agitation. Sometimes it helps to awaken us to get really clear about how we feel about things. So, I mean, I can see the light in what he does. I can see a lot of the dark though. Okay. I can see a lot of the dark. And when you, you should see my face, I'm scrolling. The, I think the color just went out of my face. I, Jeremy's like, so what's wrong? What's wrong? Somebody die? I'm like, my, um, my, my soul left my body. 
watching <laughs> all these videos. And so then I had to make a decision, like, do I actually go on? I've committed to doing it, but I don't need to do it. But I kind of wanted to do it because my feeling was he was going to try and box Crystal Ann Compton in on my, my spirituality, especially as it pertained to Christianity and Christ. And if you know me at all, you already know Christ is my homeboy. I love Christ. And actually Christianity, that's my prime paradigm. That's like, that's my operating system. I mean, there's a lot of other parts of me. Obviously, we've got a Buddha right here. Okay. We've got a Metatron's cube. We have singing bowls and we've got Ganesha. I've got a lot in my, I've got a lot in my uh, belief ecosystem. But primarily, I would say that I'm an esoteric Christian. And I think that's what he wanted to get into with me. And so he did. What he didn't know was that Crystal Ann Compton spent 12 years of her life as a fundamentalist Christian, a literalist, meaning every single word in the Bible was literally true. Therefore, I studied that Bible and I knew scriptures. I knew them when I was growing up. Could tell me nothing. If it had to do with the Bible, you could not tell me a thing. I was a street preacher. I was a missionary. I was a worship leader. I was a Bible study teacher. Like I, I was in the word, I was in Christianity, the religion, until of course I left it. And most of that, not all of the scriptures, but a lot of the scriptures are still with me today. And you know, God is good. God is good every time. And so when I need something like it bubbles to the surface, oh, remember that little eternal scripture? You could use that in a moment. So I was intrigued because I don't know that he's ever, I don't, maybe he has, but I don't know that he's ever had someone go toe to toe with him around scripture. And also to advocate for a different kind of Christianity, which I think was the opportunity for me, like to talk about how you can have love for Jesus Christ without dogma and indoctrination and groupthink and tribalism and by getting lost in religion, like you, there's another way. And I would say it's a better way. I would say it's a more ideal way and a, and a, and a real relationship that you forge with God. And I, I would also postulate that every true spiritual seeker must at some point in their life detach from the scaffolding, detach from the architecture, which is the religion, and set out on their own to go wandering in deserts for a little while to figure out who is God really to me and who am I really to God. That is a very necessary part to me of spiritual development and enlightenment. But a lot of people, maybe most people, they never get out of the church. I got out of the church and I knew that's kind of where he wanted to go with me. And so I decided to do it anyway. I talked to my friend, Elanique. She pulled a card for me yesterday. I'm like, Elanique, should I cancel this? This man's crazy on the internet. She's like, um, well, let me pull a card from my very favorite deck. And the card was power. And the card was actually Metatron. That's Metatron's cube right there, that symbol. The card was power. And it was all about stand in your power, baby. <laughs> get them, get your power now. Let's go. And I just felt it was an affirmation to do the damn thing. So I went on today. And he was as ridiculous as I thought he would be. And he did exactly what I knew he would do. And we had we didn't uh, he didn't enter that conversation on good faith meaning he really wasn't interested in getting to know me better he was interested in pitting me down and, and proving me wrong on things and so that i knew that going in though so that was that was uh, that was okay but it was still an opportunity for get for me to get my ideas and my beliefs out there he said some what i would say are insanely inappropriate things about women insanely inappropriate things about black people insanely inappropriate things about um women <laughs> just women in the bible i mean i just had to you know and i just i told myself i'm just not going to get triggered why get triggered why just tip over into em emotion and reaction now everything's crazy stay intentional stay right here stay right here and guess what i did i did i was very honest about my opinions we talked about donald trump you know nobody wants to talk about donald trump well, everybody seems to want to, but nobody like of their right mind really wants to sit down and talk about it. I talked about it, talked about Barack Obama. We talked about racism, not a lot, you know, a little bit about racism, very uncomfortable topics for most people. And here's the real point of this video today. 
is that we've got to be willing to be uncomfortable. And I know that's a tagline. People are saying that, but I really, I really did it today. I really put my money where my mouth was. I said, I'm going to get really uncomfortable and I'm going to be with somebody who many would consider to be an odious personality. No offense, Jesse Lee, if you're watching this, you're a rascal. You've got to be willing to have those be very uncomfortable and still be able to articulate your position and why you believe the thing. Like, who do you say I, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? You gotta be able to say who you think God is. You gotta be able to say who you think you are. And of course, there wasn't enough time for me to get all the way into my thing, but I was able to get, I was able to get some things, some things in there. And at one point I think I said, now I hear the words that you're saying, but I don't agree with any of them. <laughs> and then he go, but right, but medium summon the dead, right? <laughs> I'm just like, well, it was um, kind of a kind of a clown show. I don't believe that it was invalidating for me. I think that it was good for me. It was good for me to go toe to toe with somebody who has some pretty bizarre opinions and who's talking about them. There should be a counterpoint to that. You know, we don't just want like weirdos, not that he's a weirdo, Jesse, but like we just don't want like imbalanced people screaming into the void, right? We want other people to counter that. We want to actually have conversations. We want to be able to disagree. And I might not always think the same way. And there might be some opinions of, of mine that you don't necessarily like but there's always common ground that we can find there's always a place to meet in the middle there's always a place of agreement that can exist maybe not on issues but like in our humanity in our oneness you know neville goddard said everything is just you pushed out and i thought about that before i got on that call today this man is just me pushed out. Why is he entering my experience right now? How did I stumble upon this, this particular show? And how did I get here? What is he showing me about me? Because he's a projection that comes from within me. If you want to get really esoteric here, he's a projection of me. He's a projection of all of us. And when we are engaging with a projection, it's always an invitation to look at ourselves more deeply. Because the only way to correct what is being projected onto the screen of life in the form of people, places, opportunities, things, bank accounts. The only way to change that is to change what's happening on inside of you. So everything is an opportunity. Every agitation and agitator is an opportunity for you to go deeper into yourself and put it all back into alignment, which, you know, just it's, it's a good way to look at things. <laughs> I was engaging with a version of myself and I was doing so respectfully. And I, I went into that with love in my heart. I really did. And I told the truth. And what else can you do but that? So that interview, I don't know when he's putting it out. I had to sign an NDA because I, and I am like, why am I not an NDA? Um, some kind of a hold harmless liability thing. And I'm like, why? I've never had somebody ask me to sign something that holds them harmless in case something goes wrong. Like what could go wrong? Well, I know a lot of things could go wrong and he can still use the footage and he can use it forever. I signed it and I did it. And I'm glad that I did that interview. As I was saying, well, I don't know, be out. What is it? Thursday next week, maybe, or I, do you want me to even tell you? I mean, I'm kind of like protective of you. I don't necessarily know that you are going to like watching it this interview. I think, I don't know if you're going to like this person. I don't know if you're going to be triggered, but hey, if you are, that is an invitation. What is your triggered response attached to? Why are you getting so emotional and reactive? Hey, do you know how to not stay in that state and get back to love? Like it's all just an opportunity. So if you want me to let you know when it happens, or you can just check his YouTube, the fallen state. I'm warning you. I mean, it's clown world. We're in clown world. We're presently in clown world but and maybe in my community i can maybe in my text community by the way if you want to hear from me first if you want to hear from the horse's mouth how dare you call me a horse how dare you but if you want to be the first to hear anything from me that's going on in my life you want to be a part of my text community text cac.com just text the number right at textcac.com. You'll be connected to me via my community and i will let my text community know when that interview drops Okay, <laughs> on that note, I'm going to get out of here. It's actually been kind of a long time since I have um, been up on YouTube with a video face to face. Here's what I look like right now. How, what, how am I doing? Oh, the filters, though. If you could only see the hyperpigmentation, if you could only see the wrinkles and the crow's feet, darling. Oh, God. If you could only see. 
but um, it's been a while since I've been up on YouTube, but I mean, I love to connect with you. So hopefully more videos in the future. Don't forget to check out chrislancomden.com slash 360 to be a part of my new program. And until next time, never, not ever, now don't you ever forget that I have got nothing but love for you. Bye guys.